Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. My name is Zach and this is my little internet show about whitewater stuff. And today I want to talk about advanced reading water. That's what I'm going to call it. This is my attempt to, to talk about reading water in video form. And like I've said in the previous videos, there's no exact way to teach this. It's very difficult to teach reading water. In my mind, the only way to really truly get good at reading water is go out and do it. Try new rivers. You know, instead of doing the same river over and over, try another river at your river level and lead more, be the first boat down so you can make decisions and be supported by a good crew. Do it in a safe environment. So we started off by talking about basic reading water, which I'm just going to say is like shooting the V and cutting the C. Cutting the C is you generally want to stay to the inside of corners uh, because the water is slower there. Then we talked about some intermediate stuff, which is what happens when you just add rocks. You know, rocks create holes. Some rocks you can like slide off of, some you can't. And so being able to sort of look at different rocks and see how you can and can't use them, I think is intermediate uh, reading water. And I'm gonna talk about some advanced stuff. And this is advanced, it's all relative. There's also super advanced, there's super duper advanced, there's like class five plus kayaker, super, super, super advanced. But for those of us in rafts, I'm gonna call what I'm gonna talk about today some, some advanced stuff. And this is, again, it's all relative. And this is my very best attempt to share some knowledge I have with you about reading water. It's, it's a very difficult thing to talk about because, again, it's an art form. There's not exact answers for all this stuff, but I'm going to talk about some things I've learned along the way, basically from mistakes that I've made. Unfortunately, the way you really learn this stuff is you're around mistakes that you probably don't make again because they got you pretty bad. So first of all, when I'm running rivers, let's say it's a river I've never, I've never done or it's a river that's never been done, or even if it's, I haven't done it since last year, um, I'm always scanning for logs. That's always in the back of my head. Like, is there a log coming downstream, right? And even on rivers I've done constantly, logs are always in the back of my head because they show up new and they're incredibly dangerous. And so when you're reading, you're just always scanning, trying to make sure there's no logs downstream. Uh, next, you're, you're looking for eddies you can catch before corners. And so as you're going down, if you're the first boat, you know, I'm always saying to myself, okay, well, if around the corner is a riverwide log or a waterfall or whatever, I can catch that eddy. Okay, okay, we get to that eddy. Okay, now can I see around the corner to another eddy? And I'm always hopping from eddy to eddy. And when I can't get to an eddy, or I don't see it in my next eddy, that's when I scout. When I don't have the information I need or the ability to stop, I get out and I walk down the river and check it out. It's also important if you're behind the lead boat, let's say you're the third boat, and you only see two eddies down there for the two boats, you need to hold back. Because if they, if the first boat sees a log and they eddy out and the next boat eddies out and there's no room for you, you're going into that log. And this is a super important detail. I've seen this happen several times and both times people went under logs in an incredibly dangerous way. Some of the most dangerous things I've seen happen are because the third or fourth, fifth boat didn't leave like there was enough eddies for almost everybody, but the last boats there were eddies for. So you need to kind of back up a little bit there and make sure that you see your eddies when you're reading your own water. Um, another thing I scan for a lot is man-made objects for river-wide weirs, for bridge embankments. Anything man-made is something that's just always, always in the back of my head. And um, finally, when I'm looking downstream, as we're entering a gorge, I'm thinking to myself, you know, if we get to a certain point, is it possible to even portage? Right, so if you're starting to commit yourself to a gorge or a narrow canyon, like if there's a if there's something that we have to portage, can we portage it? Right, and and if you don't see a portage routes, then you want to pull over and do a lot of careful scouting in case you need to do a way up and around portage. So, to me, that's sort of advanced river running. It's basically looking for clear routes for yourself and your friends. And I want to do a little demonstration here. So before we look at this, I'm going to draw eddies where there are going to be eddies. Again, seeing eddies is an important part of reading water so you can know where you can and can't pull over. So I know that behind this rock is an eddy. I know behind this little bend in the geology, whatever this is called, there's going to be eddy here. I know behind this tree, behind trees, there can actually be eddies. You know, maybe suspect whether you want to catch that eddy. You know, behind this rock, there's going to be an eddy. Behind this rock, an eddy. That rock, an eddy. And behind this rock, a strong eddy. And maybe a weaker eddy behind that tree. And so as I'm coming down, 
I'm scouting out eddies that give me a field of view. I think this is really important being able to, and I call this boat scouting. You can catch eddies from your boat. Well, I don't just call it boat scouting. Everybody calls it boat scouting. But I'm gonna take my Lego guy here, and you know, as I'm coming down, I see a rock, I obviously avoid the rock. There's, you know, I'm gonna go over here, and I can come down, and I can catch this eddy. However, whatever method I wanna have. And if I can catch this eddy, that's important, because then I can look downstream at this mess, and see if I can see a path through. Do I see V's? Do I see cushions? Do I see the whole path? And I think that being able to see the whole path is an important part of reading water. And so from this vantage point, I can see this much information, which cuts out this super dangerous log. And so because I don't see all, enough information and an eddy that I can realistically catch, I'm going to choose to scout, right? I could maybe come down and catch this eddy, but the problem with eddies in the middle of the river is once you're in the middle of the river, you can't portage from there. You're pretty committed to that rapid. So I probably wouldn't do that. Another great option if you're you know, a solid boater and catch a lot of eddies, which I, it's just very important to be able to solidly catch eddies, is to come down, catch this eddy, which gives you a much better field of view to what's going on, including a view of this tree. So the boater in this eddy has the better field of view in the rapid and can see the log. And once they see the log, it's pretty obviously a portage, but at the minimum, it's a scout, right? So then you come over to this thing and then you tie your boat up and you get out and you scout and you probably portage or line your boat. And so what I want to just point out here, a, a big part of advanced river reading and river running is being able to kind of catch eddies and see as far as you can. And if you see another eddy, be able to like go down to it potentially, but realize when you don't have enough information and it's time to scout and then basically read the water from shore. So anyway, that's my series. Uh, that's the, this is the last video in my series on reading water. Maybe I'll do more in the future. It's been a real challenge to figure out what to communicate, what's important. And so hopefully a lot of you got something out of this. And if you have, again, like, like every video, if you have things you think I should add to this or subtract, or you're like, no, this was a waste of our time, like you explained this wrong, or you're like, yeah, no, this is super helpful. That really helps me because I want to try to develop this series of classes into something even better. That's something that I've, I have lesson plans for and I'm trying to develop. So I would love any feedback you have on how to make it better. Or if you're just like, no, that's perfect. I mean, feel free to tell me that too. I always want my ego stroked. Um, but anyway, don't forget to like, like and subscribe. And um, yeah, see you in the next episode. Thanks.